Welcome to the Six Figure Business Mastery Podcast, where every week, Kirsten and Jeannie dive into the essential topics to fuel your business growth. From copywriting to course creation, mindset to video marketing, they've got you covered. Tune in for expert guest interviews on all things marketing and business, and learn how to work on your business, not just in it. So, get ready to unlock your business potential and take it to the next level. Welcome everyone to our newest episode. I am thrilled to have Nick Osborne with us. He is a copywriter, trainer, speaker, he teaches writers to combine AI and emotional intelligence. So I'm excited to dig into that with them today. So welcome, Nick. We're thrilled to have you. Thank you for inviting me. It's fun to be here. Excellent. Okay, so tell us even a little bit more about you. How did you get to where you are now? So I started out as a trainee copywriter in an ad agency in London in 1979. So I've been a copywriter forever. And I started off doing print, and then I was doing a lot of direct mail. And then along came the web. So I built my first website in 1995. So as soon as that became a thing, I was just like fascinated. So I've got a bit of a thing for leaning into new stuff. I just, I don't know, I'm like a magpie. If something's shiny, I go for it. And the web fascinated me right from the outset. And so then I've been working with AI for about five years. I was using in a kind of chatbot business where I was a partner. But then along came ChatGPT, and it's just obviously it's groundbreaking and, and fascinating and exciting and terrifying and just everything. So as a writer, like I've been, I'm a copywriter, but I'm also like a trainer. I create courses. And so I started getting a lot of questions like early 2023 of Nick, what is this? Should I pay attention? Should I be worried? Should I be excited? So I've been doing a lot of work in that and I've been creating courses around it and I've done a lot of writing and, and speaking about it. Yeah, it just changes so fast, doesn't it? I know. And I like it because you can't get bored, but also it's scary. Oh, I'm totally with you and can appreciate your journey from the writing, the direct mail pieces to the web. I was totally all about that when that came out. And But the AI, I feel like, is traveling faster than the speed of light. So let's talk a little bit about digital copywriting because that's really important. Our listeners are a lot of business owners and entrepreneurs, and they do a lot of copywriting, whether it's on their website or in their emails or in their right. social media posts. Let's talk a little bit about what do you see happening, AI and emotional intelligence. Let's talk about that. All right. So the point you made is you're spot on. Good copywriting is essential to any online business. Because a badly written subject line will get half the open rate of a well-written subject line. And a, a medium quality email will get half the click-throughs of a well-written email. So good copy is very important to, to online business. But you really see it in the online space because, of course, we can measure everything in real time. I can send out an email and two hours later I can look at the metrics and see the open rate and the click-through rate. So the impact and importance of copy becomes very evident very quickly when you're working in the digital realm. As opposed to the olden days when I was working with print with someone have to wait like weeks and weeks to get results back. Now the arrival of artificial intelligence in this space has been like a, a boon but also scary because some of these models, we'll talk about chat GPT, GPT-4 or GPT-4.0, with the right prompting with some careful prompting, not just a kind of quick, easy prompt, but with some careful prompting, you can get some pretty good copy out of that. Can you get the kind of quality of copy you'd get from the best copywriter? Probably not. Certainly not yet. But there are companies out there doing the math on this and they're saying, hang on, if I can get a thousand pieces of content written in a thousandth of the time for a thousandth of the price, then that's going to take care of the fact that it's not quite as good as a tier human copywriter because I'm just getting volume at an incredible bargain price. So that's the scary part. And it's scary for a few reasons. One, it's scary for copywriters because a writer can say, if you're a freelance writer or you're working in, in house with a company, a writer can say, yes, I'm better. And the company can say, we know that, but look at the math. Sorry. But there's not a problem here. And, and that is there are a lot of companies out there that have done the math and they are saying, okay, we're going to use AI and they're using the same models like GPT-4 or Gemini or, or whatever their favorite model. They're using the same prompt libraries, top 50 prompts. They're often using the same kind of templates, the email template, the blog post template. And so inevitably what happens is they start sounding the same because they're using the exact same system, which is nuts because companies spend millions and then billions of dollars building a brand that they want unique to themselves. And then all of a sudden they're taking the kind of using the easy button, the cheap button to create the content with AI, but they're sounding just like their competitors. So that's when I start talking about adding in emotional intelligence. So emotional intelligence has, has been a thing for a very long time. It was probably best articulated by Daniel Goleman in his book, Emotional Intelligence, back in the mid 1990s. And that's about listening. It's about being empathetic. It's about being emotionally intelligent to the people around you. And it's been part of copywriting forever. 
like any good copywriter listens before they write. They mm -hmm. listen to their audience, the language mm -hmm. of their audience, the emotions of their audience, that they, they become familiar, they listen carefully. And also any good copywriter will be empathetic to that audience. They'll say, hey, what if I walked in that person's shoes or saw the world through their eyes? What would my messaging be? What would my language be? So emotion has always been very important to really good copywriting. Good copywriters always understood that people buy for emotional reasons. Not, It's not rational. I don't buy a new pair of sneakers thinking, okay, the material in the soles, is that going to last for four years or five years? I buy it because of the brand and the look and because I like it and I want it. It's an emotional choice. So emotion is really important, but these models, these artificial intelligence models, they can read about emotion. They've read the script, a love story and Romeo and Juliet, but they haven't felt them. They haven't mm -hmm. felt emotion. They can't feel emotion. They've never eaten ice cream. They've never walked along the beach and felt the sand between their toes. They've never cradled a baby at two in the morning that won't stop crying. There's a lot of experiential side to being human and the emotional side to being human and the sensory experiences we have, the stories we share, the stories we have. Mm -hmm of the old friends. Hey, do you remember that time when we were on the beach or that time when we went to New York City or, or whatever? They, ha they have none of that. And that is the kind of realm of emotional intelligence, of being aware of, of one's own emotions, being aware of other people's emotions, being empathetic, being mindful, listening. Oh, we're such terrible listeners. <laughs> and if we get better at listening, then we become more emotionally intelligent. So what I'm saying to people is, hey, Yes, you can use artificial intelligence. It's fantastic for brainstorming. It's fantastic for research, for outlining, for structure, for ideation. I have a friend who's a very well-paid, very famous copywriter, and he's often looking for a big idea for a campaign or a sales page. And he doesn't use AI for writing. He says, that's what I do. But he says, I do use it for help coming up with ideas. Give me 20 random ideas on X. So there's amazing ways that we can use AI as digital copywriters, as creators. But what I suggest, say to people is, look, don't fall prey to the easy button just because it can then write a final draft for you. It doesn't mean to say that's the best draft. Mm -hmm. I know it's easy for you because it'll do it in 30 seconds and it might take you four hours to write it. But be careful because if you follow the easy button and just get it to do everything, then it doesn't have that layer of emotional intelligence. Like I've asked one of these models to say, okay, open this email with uh, just a little anecdote, a little story. And it did, and it just made up a story. And it reminded me of a story, a real life story from my own life. So I just rewrote that intro. And now it was a real story. Mm -hmm. And there's a difference there. There's a nuance there. There's a kind of reality there. Because it was my experience that I was sharing rather than a chatbot ma making it up based on what it's read elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So that is what I teach and what I do is say, for instance, on, on my website, I have a blog and it's hard work writing this blog post. I do one every week. I've done one every week almost for 20 years and it's work, but I never use artificial intelligence to write those blog posts. I might use it to say, hey, what should I write about next? Based on these last 10 topics, what should I tackle next? So again, I'll use it for research, for brainstorming, for outlining, but I always write it because say for me as an individual, a writer or a trainer, I am my brand. My voice is my brand. My writing is my brand. So I have to be very careful not to break that. And I think obviously you're right. It is your brand as a writer. But I think also for people's businesses, they forget that, yes, AI can write this for you, but it's writing something very similar for someone else. And now you're both sounding like you do the same thing when you don't. You probably don't. Right. So differentiation has always been a key to any kind of marketing. And you lose that. Now, that said, there are things that the AI is fantastic at. I remember years ago, I was part of a startup and it was uh, we were selling jewelry online. And I was the copywriter and some of it was fun, but I also had to write product descriptions. Gold earrings, 30 different gold earrings. Like, it is the most tedious writing work in the world, writing product descriptions on gold earrings. Let me tell you, I wish I had artificial intelligence to do that. So there are various tasks like that. If I want just like... Random blog post, 10 things you must do if you visit Paris this summer. I'll get ChatGPT to do that for me. It can do that really well. But if, like I say, it's meant to be my voice on whether it's on LinkedIn, whether it's a blog post, or whether it's me selling something, again, not just me as an individual, but it could be a small business or a large business where you want to protect your brand. You want to protect your voice. You can do part of that with AI is you can go in and say, look, here's the avatar of our ideal customer. You can create a lot of context for prompts. You can get AI pretty close. What I always recommend is uh, before you just click yes at the end of the conveyor belt. So you're basically mass producing with these models. And instead of just automatically falling off the end of the conveyor belt into boxes, you need like quality control. You need like the eyes of the creative director. 
like someone right. to look at that output and say, is that good enough? Yeah. Does that reflect our brand voice? Does it reflect our mission, our values, our culture as a company? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is no, then you pause. So there's this enormous temptation just to take the easy, inexpensive route. But I think if you do that, you end up damaging your brand, whether you're an individual or a small business or a large business. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's interesting you say that because I saw someone had posted something on Facebook and someone responded to it. And the response to that was, wow, that was a really nice AI prompt you gave them there. Is <laughs> That totally is an AI answer. And so I, I thought that was really interesting that people are recognizing it now. And it's complicated because sometimes, like I've written stuff where somebody said, oh, hey, I, I ran this through a checker and your piece was written by AI. And it's a false positive because I know it wasn't. Mm -hmm. But and so freelance writers have had all kinds of problems with that, where their clients have accused them of using AI when they were asked not to. And their freelance said, I, I didn't, honestly. And they said, oh, look, we put it through the checker. You did. And it's, so false positives can be very mm -hmm. difficult for writers to deal with and yeah. within companies as well. Yeah, that's a challenge. It was yeah. interesting. We went to a conference in January where they were talking about AI and using it in marketing. And this one company were so proud that they were putting out like 300 blogs a day and they it went through 15 different AI so it wouldn't sound like anyone else's. Quantity is important, but quality is more important. And I just felt, you know, what if everybody did that? We'd have an obscene wow. amount. We already have an obscene amount of information online. Do we need more? Uh, it's, not. It, that is happening at scale and Google's trying to deal with that and tackle that and they're giving a thumbs down where because there are websites out there that is 100% AI and thousands of pages of content and no humans ever reviewed or edited that and Google's trying to manage trying to deal with that mm -hmm. but you're right the fact that you are out there at volume what does it bring you in the end does it build your brand does it build your audience does it build audience loyalty does it create audience engagement or is it just more stuff I yeah. feel like it's more stuff so what would you say if you could give us some survival tips for people who are writing their copy or for copywriters who are listening? How can you keep your brand in your brand, if you will, in your copywriting? The first thing I say is don't ignore AI. It's there. It's like if you ignore AI, you're like the candle maker ignoring the arrival of Edison's light bulb. This is a transformational technology. It's not going anywhere. And just because you don't like it doesn't mean to say it's not going to swallow you whole. My view is you have to lean into it. And it's what I've done. I've leant into AI completely. I use it as much as I can to understand it as best I can. I try to keep in, up to date with it. Like I've really been putting in a lot of time to learn it because I'm a writer, all right? And I see it as an opportunity, but I also see it as a threat to my future livelihood. So I have to understand my friend, my enemy, whatever it is. So yes, understand it, lean into the technology. Don't ignore it. Don't be the person who says, oh, they, they can never write as well as a human. Actually, they can write as well as most humans. They can't write as well as good writers. Mm. But honestly, most of us are not fantastic writers. So don't underestimate how well it can write if prompted well. So yeah, don't dismiss it because that's not going to work for you. Accept it, whether you like it or not. I don't like it, honestly. I don't like the fact. I don't love it, but it's there. I don't really, I don't see I have a choice. But don't just stop at AI and don't use it as an easy button to do what you already do. So if I want to write an email to my audience, I know my audience, I'll write the email. It'll take me 15, 20 minutes, maybe less. It's tempting. Oh, I'll get AI to do that. Don't do that. Don't use it as an easy button. Use it to help you do the stuff that you actually find hard. So if I'm working on a new project with a new client or a new course or something, and I have 200 pages of, of background information to go through, I'll throw that into this model and say, hey, give me a thousand word summary of this. So that's something I would find really hard to do that I can get AI to make easy for me. Or I might say, if I'm selling a product, I might copy a hundred product reviews from Amazon, paste them into the model, and I'll say, hey, create a sentiment analysis based on these customer reviews. Really hard for me to do. I like to get 50 or 100 reviews, and in my mind, somehow organize that as a sent. Very hard for the human brain. Super easy for these models. So then I'll get this thing that they'll say 77% positive comments. And I'll say, okay, what's the language that happy people are using? And they'll give me the terms and phrases happy people use. So now I have the language of my happy user, and I can use that when I start writing the copy. So I, I like to use AI for the stuff that I find really hard. But when it comes to the writing, like one of the first things that was drummed into me as a very young man as I started out was that it's all about emotion. People buy because of emotion, because how they feel. You make them desire your product or make them fear the consequences of not having their product. It's all about emotion. So, so that then is the final layer. So not the easy button, not add volume, but 
use it to help you do the hard stuff and then write yourself. And hey, I've done copywriting where I'm like, say I'm doing a sales page and I think, you know what, there's something not quite, there's a transition here that's not right working, but I can't find it. I might put it into one of these models and say, look, this is what I wrote, but I feel there's a clumsy transition here in that first quarter. Have a look at it for me. And it does. And it doesn't always come back with an answer, but sometimes it does. And I think, man, that's right. <laughs> and I say, okay, rewrite that little bit for me. And it does. And I think, perfect. Or, or maybe I think close to perfect and I'll tweak it a bit myself. So sometimes I'll use the model to make myself a better writer. Love that. But that emotional intelligence part is for me, the kind of secret source because it makes the output better always. And it's also, if I'm a freelancer or even working at a team within a company and my client or my manager says, yeah, but we've got the, we've trained these models now to pretty much do your job. Thank you. But no, thank you. And I can come back and say, tell me about the emotional intelligence you, you're seeing there. And they're going to say, excuse me. And now I have a conversation about what the model lacks and how you need that human touch. And it's almost like the messiness of a human. We're messy. We have messy edges. We're imperfect. We're a little eccentric. We have our vulnerabilities. We have our little, that's important. That's how we relate. That's what, in fact, that's sometimes what we most find most attractive about each other is our mm -hmm. flaws. We are drawn to people's, the messiness of a person. And, and that's what I try to bring back. And that's what I say. If I'm talking to a company that says, actually, we, we don't need writers anymore because we've got these models. And I'm saying, yeah, but are they messy like me? And this, excuse me. So now I have a conversation to have. I've opened a conversation. Yeah. I love that. I love that messiness because you're so right. That's what, or your imperfection, that's what makes you, and that's what makes you different. Otherwise, yeah. if we have AI writing all this for us, we're all going to sound the same and we're all going to sound very Bad. flat because, you know, some right. of the mannerisms you have or some of the things that you say, that all needs to be in there. I talk about that as being like the sameness trap. If you use the same models with the same prompts in the same industry, you fall into the sameness trap of things that inevitably sound the same, which is the absolutely, we talked about this differentiation. It's the last thing you want is to sound the same. Throw in a bit of emotion, throw in a bit of messiness, throw in that, that hue. Cause we are, we love to connect with people. I was at a big box store the other day, picking up some paint to do some redecorating. And I went to check out and it was one of those automatic checkout things where you scan it and you bag it and you pay for it yourself. And I felt disappointed. Yeah. Because I didn't have that moment with the cashier and the cashier is a stranger and would have maybe shared 10 words together at most, but it means something that human connection means something. And I felt that loss of that when I was checking out myself and I was disappointed. So as humans, we really want that human connection, even something very small like that. It matters to us. And that again is what's missing from raw AI output. Yeah. We, we yeah. don't get that connection. Things that are relatable yeah. and personal. And just yeah. like you said, emotional. It's the most powerful thing on the planet, emotion, story. Nick, this has been fantastic. You are so full of great information on how we can not be afraid of AI, but we do need to use it smart in a smart way and uh, make sure that we're incorporating emotional intelligence. So the people who are listening, how can they reach out to you if they are interested in your copywriting help? It's mostly training now. I don't do a lot of copywriting now. I do mostly training, a lot of it around AI. But yes, if you want to find me, go to my website, nickusborne.com. So that's N-I-C-K-U-S-B-O-R-N-E.com. And if you go to nickusborne.com forward slash six, S-I-X, there's a little page I put together with some goodies for you if you're listening to this. That's fantastic. Uh, so you a free download. You can sign up for a newsletter. You can get a discount on a course. There's, yeah, just go to nickusborne.com forward slash six. And, and you also find my socials are there, blogs on the site and stuff. Got it. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me today. I so appreciate this. I feel like I've learned so much and I know our listeners have learned a ton as well. So thank you, Nick. Thank you. I really enjoy being here. It's very good to meet you. Good. Thanks for listening to the Six Figure Business Mastery Podcast. If you enjoyed listening and you're ready to leverage video marketing on all online platforms or maybe even start your own video podcast, then you need to check out the Done For You and Done With You program at themarketingvaadvantage.com and take your business to the next level.